Uh, today we're going to talk about scheduling, uh, but before we get into algorithms to schedule, uh, let's talk about what gets scheduled. In previous chapters and readings, you've learned about processes and you've learned about threads and how a process uh, is made up of multiple threads and the thread itself is an execution unit or basically what uses the CPU to execute code. So what the kernel does is it schedules between threads. So a process may have multiple threads. On the operating systems, there's many processes. The scheduler needs to decide which of these threads will run next. And to switch between these threads, a context switch happens. So a thread will be running along, and one of two things will happen. Either it will require an I.O., need to go to the disk possibly, or a network call, uh, and so it will block. And then the scheduler will run, and it will decide amongst the other threads which thread should run. The other thing that could happen is a thread could be running along doing CPU, and the scheduler decides, ah, this thread's had enough time. I'm going to context switch this thread out. So if the quantum will run out, the, thread will, the scheduler will interrupt that thread and decide a new thread to run. This is called the context switch. During the context switch, the operating system has to store away the registers, the instruction pointer, um, and all the other aspects of a thread or process to get it started up again, puts it off to the side. It then decides which thread to run next, pulls in its registers, its instruction pointer, its stack pointer, and kicks it off and it starts running. The system just does this continuously. So how does an um, operating system decide which thread to run? There's many, many algorithms that optimize for different things. Today we're going to look at an algorithm called first come, first serve. Now, first come, first serve uh, basically does what it sounds like. It takes the first thread that's in the system and runs that thread until it completes. There's no preemption in the first come, first serve uh, algorithm. What is preemption? Preemption is this ability of the operating system itself to stop a running thread and put another thread on. And so this is a non-preemptive algorithm that allows the thread to continue until it decides it's done, either through an I.O. or it's done executing. Let's take a look at the first come, first serve. So let's assume we have three processes with a thread each running, and these processes show up at time 0, 1, and 2. Process 1 requires 24 CPU units, process 2, 3, and process three uh, also requires three CPU units. Let's see how first come first serve would work for the CPU. So I'm going to draw a timeline of the CPU starting at time zero. Well at time zero P1 is in the system because that's when it enters and so it will get the CPU and it will use the CPU all the way until P1 completes which is at time 24. Now at this point in time, notice that P2 and P3 have also joined the queue. The first come first serve algorithm just says, hey, I'm going to take the first one in, which was P2, and I'm going to run P2 until it's done, which would go till 27 time units. So P1 ran first because it started, P2 ran next, and then P3 runs finally for the last three time units, and we're done. That's first come, first serve. How do we know if this is a good algorithm? Well, to compare algorithms, we have different metrics that we use. One of them is called wait time. So let's find the average wait time for these processes. The average wait time is just what it sounds like, the amount of time that the process waits in the system without running. Notice P1 doesn't wait at all. So we'll put a zero for that. P2 came in at time one, got scheduled at time 24, so it's waited 23 units. And then finally, P3 came in at time two, was scheduled at time 27, so it waited 25 units. Total time amongst the three processes was 48. We divide that by three, we get an average wait time of 16. Another metric that we can use to uh, evaluate our scheduler is turnaround time. We'll call that TAT. Turnaround time is the amount of time it takes when the process en enters the system to when it exits the system. In this case, P1 started at 0, finished at 24, so its turnaround time was 24 time units. P2 entered at 1, exited at 27, its turnaround time was 26, 
And then finally, P3 entered at time 2, exited at 30, with a turnaround time of 28. If we add those up, uh, let me see if I got this right, 8, 4, I got a mistake on my thing, so I'll do it here, 18, looks like 78, sorry, divide that by 3, 26. So average turnaround time here is 26. One more metric is called response time, how quickly the system responds to the process. This is measured by the time a process enters till it first gets the CPU. And so response time for this scenario is zero for P1. For P2, it's 22, 23, because we start at one and we get response at 24. And P3 starts at two and gets response at 27, so that's 25. Notice the response time and the wait time are the same. I divided that by three. In a non-preemptive system, it's often the case that the response time and wait time are the same. Uh, last metric is throughput, which is the amount of processes you can do in a given amount of time. And so the throughput here is we get three processes done in 30 time units. So basically one process every time units will be our throughput. What's interesting to note is if instead of uh, entering at 0, 1, and 2, these processes came in at a slightly different time. Let's say process 1 came in at 2, process 2 came in at 0, and process 3 came in at 1. I won't go through all the metrics, but let's figure out the wait time here. So in this case, the first process into the system is process 2, and so it would get 3 units of time and finish. And then both process 3 and process 1 would be in the system. Process 3 came in next, so we would get the next 3 units of time. And then finally process 1, our long process, would run until time 30. Let's take a look at just the wait time in this case. The wait time for process 1 is 6. I'm sorry, is 4 because it came in at 2 and it ran at 6. The wait time for process 2 is 0. And the wait time for process 3 in this case is 2. It came in at 1, started running at 3. So here, notice we get an average wait time of 2 as compared to a wait time of 16. This is one of the problems with a non-preemptive system. Long jobs can starve smaller jobs. In our next scheduling algorithm, we'll look at shortest job first, which we'll talk about this problem exactly. Thank you.